What's up, y'all? It's your man, Lukey, and I'm here with my man, Bay Area News Group, uh, Oakland A's beat reporter, sometimes Niners beat reporter, Martin Gallegos. What's going on, Lukey? Thanks for having me back on, bro. No problem, man. Um, so what did you think? Well, first and foremost, tell people a little bit about all the stuff you're doing, like you're super famous and stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm super famous, but, uh, I've been covering a lot of, uh, pretty big events lately. Um, if you've been watching ESPN at all the last couple of days, you've seen the whole, uh, national anthem protests and stuff with, uh, all the NFL players and a guy from the Oakland A's, Bruce Maxwell, did it too. And uh, did a story on that and uh, made its way around the whole country. So, I mean, that was pretty dope. But, uh, yeah, I've just been covering a bunch of Oakland A's stuff. Like you said, a bunch of 49ers stuff. Pretty much anything happening big around the Bay Area sports-wise, I've been around it. So, I've been keeping myself busy. That's cool, man. The... That whole anthem protest, we're not going to get all political, but I feel like that's the biggest non-story in the country right now. It's just like some people want to take a knee, and then that's the story. Yeah, you know, they, they really tend to blow these things, you know, blow them up a lot. And uh, it's not, you know, something that I necessarily uh, enjoy seeing that happen too much not not the kneeling part. I, I think everybody can do whatever they want. But uh, you're more of like a X's and O's. Let's talk about the storylines yeah. in, in front of the game. And this is basically like I feel like there's people, and not to interrupt you, there's people watching these games more for like the beginning of the game to see who's going to kneel and who's not going to kneel, and they're turning the game away. After yeah, that. yeah, exactly, man. I'm I'm more I'm a sports guy, man. You know, I I I go to sports to kind of you know, get my mind off uh, Donald Trump and his crazy antics. So, you know, that's how it is. Yeah, speaking of sports, before we get into the boxing stuff, I'm thinking about getting some OKC tickets to the Sac Kings game. Uh, you're a sports reporter. Do you think I should buy them on Ticketmaster now for $160, or should I wait and try to go StubHub a uh, couple days before? Yeah, that's a tough call because, you know, I think – People will be uh, really interested to see that new Big Three in OKC. So it's a Tuesday night game, though. It's a Tuesday night. Uh, hmm. Man. So I have a friend who's a she's a really big OKC fan, and I'm a Kings fan, and I feel like that's like the November seventh is like the perfect time for me to believe the Kings could still kind of be good. Yeah. You know, we're probably like one in four by then. You're right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Tuesday night, uh, early in the season, uh, you might you might be able to to find a below value ticket if you if you play it right. Well, I mean, I'm talking 160 gets us on the court basically, and 20 dollars can get us in the door. But I'm trying to we're trying to be big balling, like because we're not going to go to another basketball game all year, so it's not oh, like we're right. doing this again, you know. Like, yeah. so, I mean, I feel like if I'm only going to one game, I might as well sit somewhere where I'm going to be on TV for an hour. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you should definitely get as close as you can to the action. Who's the new big three with OKC? It's uh, Russell, Carmelo, and... And uh, Paul George. Oh, wow. I didn't even think of him as a big three, and I spend time in Fresno. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Paul George is that type of guy, man. He's so quiet. Nobody really... I or you think of him as a star. If you have two first names, you can't be a star. Yeah. <laughs> like, Chris Paul is not really a star. Right, because of his name? Yeah, no, I'm just saying. Kinda... Like, is, did he ever transcend into, like, a transcendent star of the league? I mean, he's a great player, but tra as far as transcend the league, not necessarily. No. To me, like, the stars of the league are, like, LeBron, Steph, KD... And then, like, there might be a tier below that. But those are, like, the three big ones. And I can't even think of players beyond that. Am, am I missing one? Uh, what, what, were the, what were the players? I said uh, KD, Steph, LeBron. I guess I'd throw Harden in there. And that's yeah. about it. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much... I mean, I, I mean, if you want to throw 
Westbrook in there. I mean, but I think he's that tier two. I'm a I'm a Simmons yeah. guy. Do you listen to um the Ringer podcast that they have with that Lombardi called GM Street? Nah, I have. Oh, not. you gotta check it out. He does these tiers for football players. So he'll be mm-hmm. like, "This is tier one. This is tier two. This is tier three. It's so good if you're a sports nerd." <laughs> he tiered. Yeah, he, I, I, I've, oh. Yeah, I always enjoy Bill Simmons stuff, so I have to check that out. He's a former league executive, and every week he breaks down the football games, and it's so good. It's so good. Yeah. I'll send you a – I'll text it to you when this is over. But, um, yeah, there were a couple of fights. I was in Fresno. We don't really got to get into the Fresno fights I was at. It was more of a um, like a club show, but I went there to see Jose – who had a fully open shirt, basically, and a new beard. I was pretty into it. Um, Jose Ramirez, who fights. But let's talk about the HBO card, or we can talk about... Where Where do you want to talk in boxing? You're my guest. You tell us where we're going. Well, as far as the HBO card, I, I just watched the main event. I didn't, I didn't get to watch the rest of the card, because I was so uh, busy with work. I don't think there was work. a rest of a card. Well, yeah, but, well, every fight got canceled, pretty much, right? <laughs> Well, I mean, did you hear the story about Orozco? Yeah, yeah, he came in seven pounds over. Crazy. I heard that I he mean, didn't even weigh in. Yeah, yeah, he didn't even bother showing up, which is kind of... Uh, Amazing. Man, talk... You t- yeah, you talk about, I mean, all that momentum he had from that, that last win and just threw it all out the window with that. Well, uh, Little Birdie in the street told me the morning of the fight he was 148 pounds in his hotel room eating Cheerios and just wouldn't refuse to go to the weigh-in. That's really strange. Yeah, it makes, like, what it made me think was it made me wonder if he wants to be a boxer. Because it's like, that kind of behavior almost makes me think that he might be done with, um, I don't know, like, that he might just not like it. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's just weird. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it does seem like that. It's just weird with the timing, man. I mean, he seems like he was on the brink of a world title shot, and then he just kind of doesn't care anymore. I mean, this guy, right, this guy, like you said, brink of a world title shot, HBO debut. It's one thing to miss weight. I hate to be cynical, but guys miss weight. They miss weight by a lot. He didn't. He he went beyond missing weight. He was like, "I'm not even going to show up." Like it's like he yeah. didn't even put the effort out. Like he didn't even do the half-hearted. Oh, I'm going to do this. Like he he was basically like, "F this." Yeah, man, that's mind-boggling to me. I, I just, I mean, I I, I can't recall a, a a situation like this where it's a guy who's you know. On, usually these guys are you know hungry for to make a statement on HBO. This guy just on the biggest stage for the first time in his life just completely blows it off. I don't know, man. I've never like I honestly and I mean this. I've never heard of this happening. Yeah, yeah, me either. You know, um, yeah, you brought up a great, but it was just like this card was ill fated. Uh, Tino Avila's opponent failed his blood exam, which also was weird to me. Because why was that done after the weigh-in? You know, I feel like the blood work should have been done in the process of vetting the fight. Yeah. Yeah, that is strange. and That's tough for Tino, man. Which, by the way, he uh, threw out the first pitch at today's Oakland A's game, if anyone cares. <laughs> I wanted to be there and shoot the photo. Were you there? Yeah, I was there, man. Uh, I didn't get to go down on the field, though, for uh, when he actually threw it. But saw him throw the first pitch in the press box yeah i was supposed to be there but um my friend jerry hoffman has a terminal illness and he was doing like this uh celebration of his life party and it was kind of like maybe last time i see my friend jerry or go see tino throw out a baseball uh, pitch at a baseball game kind of hard to um go to the tino one in that instance yeah, definitely don't fault you there. Yeah, um, but it's good for Tino. I'm looking at the dates. You know me, I don't know everything or anything, but I'm thinking December 14th is the Tino return on ESPN. 
Yeah, I mean, as, if you could get on a, you know, some type of nationally uh, televised card, that'd be that'd be nice for him. Well, I think it, if matchmaker Lukey thinks, I think he's going to be on that card, and he's going to fight um, what's his face, Abe Lopez. Yeah, that's the fight. Uh, the fight that he wants, right? I mean, let's let's be honest here. We, everyone that's smart knows that Andy Mancis and Eric DeLeon's the fight that's simmering, right? Conversely, Tino Avila versus Abe Lopez is the fight that's brewing on the other side. That's just what I feel. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a definitely a matchup that like like the Vences De Leon fight. It just makes it, it makes a lot of sense, you know. Um, two guys who are kind of, you know, on the same uh, same level, and w- the winner moves on to bigger and better things. So, yeah, it'd make a lot of sense. Yeah, and, uh, like Golden Boy has these dates right with ESPN, but they don't really have fights. Yeah, yeah. Um... I mean, it seems like Friday, what's the last big fight they've had on, on ESPN? Well, I mean, that's the key word here, Martin. They're not doing big fights. They're just doing fights. Yeah. So that's like the tough business because basically I like Golden Boy. A lot of people don't think I like Golden Boy. I like Golden Boy. But um, you got Top Rank. Top Rank is bringing over – Stars. They're bringing Crawford, Lomachenko, Pacquiao. They put them on ESPN. Golden Boy is not going to put Canelo on ESPN, and outside. Of, and then they didn't put Linares on ESPN. So what are they really offering ESPN? So they got to put start matching guys up. Oh yeah, definitely. I, yeah, I yeah. That's what with Golden Boy, man. I I feel like uh, instead of putting Joseph Diaz Jr. on the pay per view undercards, they should use him as like that star on ESPN, but I guess they don't want to do that. I'm not sure what their plan is, but it really seems like they're very, how do I say, they don't want to, they're not hip to the idea of putting their guys who could be the biggest names on network television. Yeah, which is really strange. I mean, you see a lot of them on these pay-per-views, and I mean, nobody's watching those fights. If we're being honest, you know, and outside of the hardcore boxing fan, you put them on ESPN. At least, you know, you might get a chance to see that random person who's looking for football run into that fight and say, "Wow, this guy's pretty good." Yeah, I think that's an important point because, like, what's a pay-per-view success? A million views, but then on ESPN, if something does a million views, that's a terrible outing. Right. So, I feel like this is the one thing Al Heyman doesn't get credit for, is he really made, in a weird way, he made people have to make better fights. Because he put so much out for free and eventually matched his guys up. Now you see it with top rank and you see it with Golden Boy, you have to put out good fights now. Yeah, you know, and uh, yeah, that's one thing I've I've noticed. You know, people want to... Go. I see a lot of people, you know, praising Top Rank and all that for uh, putting those big fights on ESPN now, and they don't give credit to uh, Al Heyman. But I mean, really, he's the one who started that trend, you know. As we're being honest, and I love Top Rank as well. They're, uh, I think, the best private promotional company in the world right now. But uh, Al Heyman really started that trend, and Top Rank's running with it as they should. Well, they just they kind of honed it in with a better formula. They said. We're going to only be on ESPN. We're going to be on Friday nights and then maybe Saturday nights sometimes. Like, they're picking dates. Al Heyman was like, we're going to be on Wednesday, we're going to be on Tuesday, we're going to be on Friday, we're going to be on Saturday, and we got eight networks. Yeah, yeah, it does get kind of lost in the shuffle with all those channels. Speaking of top rank... Because I just, I mean, do you really want to talk about Linares versus Luke Campbell? I mean, I like the fight, but do you really want to talk about it? I mean, I mean, I guess if you want to touch on it, we could. But it, to me, it wasn't a fight that is really something that we could spend, you know, a half an hour breaking down. It wasn't, you know, that type of fight, honestly. But uh, 
so, he called out Mikey Garcia. So I mean, that's. I mean, it's something it, to talk about, I guess. It was a competitive fight, but it was a fight where it was like. He, I mean, this is where I was going to go with this. I wasn't even going to talk about the fight. Is Jorge Linares a Hall of Famer? Uh, I mean, you, you you say the name and then you automatically think no. But, uh, I mean, we've seen guys get in with, I guess, similar, similar no, 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 records. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not letting you do this. I'm not letting you do this. <laughs> if you had a vote, and let's name three fighters of this era. So we got, we got uh, Jorge Linares, we got Mikey Garcia, and we got Robert Easter. Well, okay, and then I got to come up with one more. Uh, Lamont Peterson. Okay, so Mikey's getting your vote. Who's the other one? Probably Lamont Peterson. So that makes you wonder, it, like, because I was watching this and I'm like, you look at Jorge Linares, you look at his record, it's pretty good. But for some reason, is it just the DeMarco loss being that bad? Is it the fact that most of his fights are on obscure channels, even if they're famous? Why Why don't we have this respect for Linares? I think both of those things are a huge factor as to why they don't. That DeMarco loss is something. When, honestly, when I think of uh, Linares, and while it might not be fair, I always think of that DeMarco loss. Uh, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. And uh, I mean, yeah, over the last two years, he's he's been in some some you know some exciting fights that you know your typical boxing fan who loves a brawl you know has enjoyed, but those fights haven't really been you know uh, a fight that's been watched by a lot of people you know here in the United States. So, I mean, it's it, both of those things that you mentioned are I think a big reason why we don't you know really look at them that highly. And yeah, like like you said, I mean, if you gave me a Hall of Fame vote, I mean, just off the top of my head, I I'd, I'd honestly have to say no. Well, it's like here's the other thing to me, like, and you correct me if I my memory of Linares' career is wrong. He had a a good portion of his career I didn't watch. Then he went on HBO and Lampley compared him to Sugar Ray Leonard, if I remember. Then Demarco stops him on pay per view. Of was that the B-Hop versus uh, Dawson 1 undercard, I want to say. Maybe, but my memory's off. So then he goes to Japan, if I'm right, and then he fights in Japan for years. Then he fought in Sacramento at the Memorial Auditorium and had a life-or-death battle with a guy I've never seen again. And then he kind of re-emerged like, within the last three to four years, I want to say. And then his past kind of gotten forgot about, but then he kind of has started to take these fights in the UK and odd locations. And then that's kind of where he's at. Is that, does that sound like a fair career assessment? Yes, yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, yeah, like I said, he was fighting in the UK a lot and he built up, uh, a, I mean, I guess you could say he built up a nice following out there. Um, but I mean, even then, I mean, not to, uh, you know, talk bad about UK fighters, but, you know, are Anthony Krola and uh, Luke Campbell necessarily, you know, the top top level fighters? I, I, I mean, they're, they're good fighters. They're really good fighters. But, I mean, you look at, I, I mean, I look at their skills from what I see. I, I, don't, I don't necessarily think they're, you know, on that level of like a Mikey Garcia or something like that. What about my doppelganger, my twin, uh, Kevin Mitchell? <laughs> I mean, Kevin Mitchell, I mean, was really good at one point, and then he took a beating. A lot because of, he and, dropped Linares and almost stopped him. Yeah, yeah, I remember that, yeah. And that, I guess that's why it's hard for me to, like, Linares is a really good fighter, but it's hard for me to put him in that tier one, like the elite. Because, like, after this fight, I was thinking, because I was thinking about how kind of BS pound-for-pound lists are, because I'm convinced Keith Thurman's in the top five of the pound-for-pound, 
but no one has the balls to put him there. Just because, like, for some reason, you can't put Keith Thurman in the top five. And I was yeah, thinking, I mean, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I look at Lenares as, as he he has this this just the just you look at him, you know, training. You look at the skills that he has, and you think, wow, this guy should be you know undefeated. And then you look at what he's done, actually, you know, in fights, and you kind of you know don't put the two together. You, you, you'd think he's better than he is if you just, you know, base it off his overall skills. And, and uh, you know, I mean, who was it? Freddie Roach or someone said that he was the greatest, one of the greatest fighters you ever watched train, I think, or something like that. What? And that's kind of like the mythos on him, right? Because he's got all these kind of bootleg security camera KOs, basically annihilating people in the gym. And when you watch him hit mitts, you'll go, who is that guy? But it's like, for some reason... It doesn't quite translate. Yeah, it's like a basketball. You know, you know those great basketball players that you hear about. You know, they're great in the gym. You know, in practice when nobody's watching, but you know when the lights come on, you know it's not the same. It's just it's it's different. So you're comparing a Jorge Linares to Shaquille O'Neal shooting free throws because they used to say he made a hundred for a <laughs> hundred, and then in the game he never made one. Exactly, that yeah. is a perfect comparison. No, I hear you, man. It's, uh, I don't know, man. It's just because I was thinking about it and I'm like, if you really think about Jorge Linares' resume, right, and you're being fair, he probably has just as good of an argument to be on the pound for pound list as Mikey, right? Or am I off on that? Yeah, no, no, you're right. But then, like, we all assessed through the eyeball test. We're like, nah, Mikey's way better. And then my gut feeling was, why do we initially kind of blow off Linares like that? Yeah. No, yeah, you I mean, I, no, you're right. I mean, I, I, I never really, uh, really asked myself that, but now that we talked about it, yeah. Well, I mean, I think that that's like, because if you think about it, Linares is basically his career is over. He has like one, two, three more fights, right? And then when he retires, people are going to, like, how are you going to eulogize his career? It's like his career is almost over and people are feeling like it's just beginning. Yeah, I mean, right now, if he were to retire, the first thing I'm going to think about is DeMarco, DeMarco loss. Yeah, it's just, to me, it's very weird because, like, I was trying to think of it and it's, he's a fighter. I guess this is how, like, when my grandpa used to tell me about the old time fighters who, who he'd tell me were good. And then you'd look at the record, and it was kind of weird. And then he'd say, well, the guy was a little weird, and he lost to a few guys. That's Jorge Linares. He's like the guy that falls between the cracks in boxing. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. Well, this isn't working right now. We don't have enough controversy yet. (laughs) This isn't (laughs) controversial. The ratings, I've been watching Skip. uh, Skip is Shannon. Did you see that Shannon when he was like, uh, I forget who he was talking about. No, he's talking about Michael Jordan. He goes, Michael Jordan likes that hen dog. <laughs> Have you seen that? <laughs> I did not see that. Yeah, he likes that hen dog. He'd be drinking. He likes that hen dog. <laughs> <laughs> and wow. Then, and then Skip Bayless was like, well, I just think that, oh my God, Skip Bayless is like one of the worst things that happened to sports. <laughs> he's a polarizing figure, man. Well, it's like what he brought in that I don't like is he brought in the outlandish take with no empirical data. So he'll just be like, LeBron James is not good at basketball. And people will be like, wait, I don't understand how you can argue that. But it'll be like, he is not a very good basketball player. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, nobody can uh, change his mind about that. And then you'll be like, well, I don't know. But, um... What did you think of Oscar Valdez? Did you get a chance to see Oscar's fight? I did. And, uh, I mean, I think we've, we've talked about this, you know, uh, he's a guy who always, you know, makes for exciting fights and this was no exception, but to see him get dropped like that, I mean, I wasn't surprised at all and I wasn't surprised to see him come back and drop the other guy. But I mean, he's, he's that type of fighter, you know, um, always in exciting fights, but I think his style, 
is something that eventually, you know, I don't know if it, I don't know if that was, you know, a sign of it catching up to him, you know, in this fight, but I mean, eventually, you know, I, I, I can see it catching up to him. I hope I'm wrong, but to me, it felt like this is a troubling sign. Yeah, no question. I mean, I, like I said, it's, it, it's a it, all these types of fighters, you know, like like Valdez. They're they're you know people, people love it, but you know when he gets to you know early mid thirties, can he keep on fighting this way? I don't I don't I don't odds are probably not. You know. Well, what troubled me about Valdez is right. You look at his last two fights, Mariaga, and we'll just say Genesis because I can't say the guy's last name. So you look at these two fighters. The big issue I had was he didn't box either of them. Like, he boxed in spurts against Genesis, but he's really getting into these problems because he's not boxing guys. And he has the ability, and I feel like the matchmaking for these fights are basically, you got to pick your spots to bang and box. And he's getting into trouble because he's fighting fire with fire. Yeah, but do you think that's because he he wants to put on a show or is he just not? Cause I mean, I, I mean, the dude was an Olympian, so you got to think he's got, he's got boxing skills. I think that what it is, is I think that because I've seen him train and I like Oscar a lot. I think that he really wants the fan. Like I, when I look at his eyes, I think that he wants to entertain the fans. And I think that when he gets into a real fight, he wants to will himself to victory. So he's not the kind of guy that's going to rest on his laurels and try to point or do maybe what's best for him. He wants to forcibly like subdue or uh, make the other guy quit. He doesn't want to just go to something that could work. Right. So he's kind of like, a, in a way, like a Gennady Golovkin. Yeah, actually, I think that's, as crazy as that sounds, that's a very adequate comparison. Right? I mean, a guy who can box, you know, the dude was an Olympian, a crazy amateur background, but he's, con- once he turned pro, you know, going for the knockout, trying to excite the fans. Yeah, I think that the big thing with him is, um, it's just going to be a big, uh, He's just got to, to me, it looks like he's got to make an adjustment with certain types of fighters because who's coming next for him? On the broadcast, they're hitting Carl Frampton. Well, Carl Frampton's going to really try to box him. And if he sits and bangs, Carl's going to load up on shots. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, if, if, if Oscar, you know, if he, if he, uh, you know, keeps fighting with that aggressive style against Frampton. I mean, that that's a tough fight for him to win, I think. Yeah, it's like, where do you assess him right now? I mean, to me, you know, in the 126-pound division, he's still one of the top guys, uh, no question. You know, world champion. And uh, I think, you know, he he got dropped, but, you know, the fact that he came back strong like that, uh, was it was a good sign? Um, I'm trying to think of who I'm blanking out on 126 top names right well, now. We got Leo Santa Cruz, Abner Mares, um, Carl Frampton, Gary Russell Jr. Um, those are the big dogs, right? That's the tier one. And then do you yeah. want the tier two? Because Valdez is probably the tier below those guys. If we're being real, would you say that's Gordon. fair or? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think him if you know Heyman and Top Rank did business, him and Mars would probably be a real good fight. So Same guy, with Santa Cruz. Like I'd say, the guys like a level below those guys are like the Joseph Diaz Juniors, mm-hmm. the Jose Rojas. Um, who else do we got? We got the Scott Quigs of the world. Like those guys are like probably in the Valdez range, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. As far as that division, I think Gary Russell, I got to put him on top. Uh, do we? Do we? Uh, 
I mean, it's to me, it's Here Gary Russell and Leo Santa Cruz because I think that Leo Santa Cruz is criminally underrated because just a lot of people wanted him to suck. They thought he took a lot of <laughs> easy fights and they just wanted him to suck, and then they won't give him credit. And the guy's a really good fighter. And the one fight he lost, his dad had cancer, and people want to act like that didn't affect him. Yeah, like he's a robot or something. Yeah, it's like he's going to go into a fight. His dad's got cancer, and people are like, oh, you're fist fighting in a couple of weeks, and he's worried about his dad's health, loses like a split decision to Frampton, and people go, oh, man, he was a, he was fake. He wasn't good. Comes back and beats him, and people say it's a fluke. I mean, maybe I'm a Leo defender, but I just think it's stupid that people uh, criminally underrate, because Leo Santa Cruz should be in the pound for pound. Yeah, you can make. I mean, you can make the case. I mean, that that win over Frampton was was big, man. He he showed me a lot, and that win over Frampton. I mean, that was that was impressive. The way he just how disciplined he was in that fight, man. Yeah, um, I don't know. Um, what's it called? But, the oh, go ahead. No, but yeah, but just, I mean, getting back to Valdez. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, if, if if top, I mean, I guess 126, yeah, you could put I, top five, you know, maybe maybe just looking outside of the top five, um, you know, pushing on that top tier. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it would be tough to, to know how good he is if he, if he never gets a chance to fight those top guys, you know, who are with uh, Al Heyman and all these, you know, other promoters, you know, but... I mean, he's 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 a great fighter, but like 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 I said, eventually that if he doesn't change that style, you know, it, it could catch up to him. I just like I'm going back to Lombardi's thing on the Simmons podcast. There's tiers to these boxers, and I feel like even though Valdez is a champion, he's the highest level tier two fighter, and the tier one fighters are Gary Russell, uh, Valdez, Abner Morris. And one other guy that I said before that I blanked on. But those are the top guys, right? And Valdez is about to graduate to that tier. And when you go to that tier, you got to be on your A game. Like, Gary Russell's hands are fast. Leo Santa Cruz yeah. is a difficult matchup. Abner Morris is a very good boxer. When you get in there, they are masters. He's fighting very elite guys, but he's not fighting guys who abnormally do one thing beyond... Um, well, yeah, you're right. You know, um, yeah, I mean, him and him and I think him and Jojo Diaz are kind of in the same boat a lot of ways, if you think about it, different styles, but you know, in that same, uh, same situation. Yeah, I hear you. Um, I mean, what does Jojo do, man? It's like he basically was groomed to be a star and now it's like he can't really be a star they're trying to wait for him to get a belt i get a feeling but who does he fight oscar valdez i mean i feel like a lot of people think jojo has a chance but i just feel like if you don't have the power to keep oscar off of you that's going to be problems yeah and and i haven't seen that type of power from from jojo diaz so, I mean, if they were to fight, I'd have to favor Valdez. And I know JoJo's the, I guess, what is the mandatory for Gary Russell? But, I mean, he, he, there's no way in my mind that he could beat Gary Russell, to be honest. So, yeah, Golden Boy's been kind of, you know, I'd, I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not a promoter, but I would have used him on, he would, he would be my star on, on ESPN. But, you know, it's whatever. That would be your guy. Well, did you ever listen to that old Boxing Voice interview with Gary Russell? He said something that no one picked up on that I wanted to get. I've always wanted to ask Gary this. He said, PBC fights are free for everyone but the fighters. And that kind of insinuated to me, like, what did he mean with that? And he's probably one of the most inactive fighters on that side of the fence. Yeah, I mean, he must have, you mean, got it, obviously, you know, somebody over there wasn't too happy with those comments, so, 
Yeah, he's. I mean, Gary Russell's a guy who. I mean, it's just. It's it's a shame that he he fights so. You know, he doesn't fight more often because I mean, he's his talent is just incredible. Well, let's be honest. He's basically a once a year fighter. Yeah, and I mean that. I mean, if if, if you're Floyd Mayweather or something, yeah, that's fine. But I mean, he he he's right now at a point where where he should he should be fighting. You know, three. Three, four times a year. I mean, at least three. But uh, I mean, it, yeah, it's it's a it's a waste. Whenever whenever he does fight, you know, it's it's great fights. I mean, the, the fight with uh, Oscar Escandon, he, I mean, his skills were just incredible. Um, but you know, I, I don't. I mean, I don't know what's what's next for him, and and you know, what what is I don't what is out there for him. I mean, I can't I can't think of. I mean, they're gonna do a Santa Cruz and Mares again. I, I don't know. I don't know where where he goes from from here. You know, in the near future. Yeah, I mean, I just. What do you mean, Valdez? Or I just I'm looking at Thrones, so I just I totally messed up. Oh yeah, no, no, yeah, with Gary Russell. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what's. What do you what do you, I mean? What do you think is next for him? I don't, I don't I mean, know. Basically, he just he fights. He looks good. He takes a year off, and then it's a big deal when he comes back. But it's not really. It's like, oh, Gary Russell's back. He'll fight again next year. That's what he's been doing <laughs> for four years. It's like yeah. he used to fight five times a year against guys we had never heard of. Now he fights guys we've heard of, but he fights once a year. Yeah, yeah, definitely not the best way, not the best strategy to uh, build yourself up. That's for sure. I genuinely, like, I don't want to say that he doesn't love boxing, but I don't, I don't get the want and need to prove that he's the best from Gary Russell. Like, I get more of the sense that this is something he did growing up. He was good at it. He loved it as a child, and now it's more of a business to him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it, it. That does kind of. I mean, the, yeah. There's athletes like that, you know, that are just they're they're so skilled. But I mean, is the. I mean, I don't want to question the guy's love for the sport, but I mean, is the the drive to want to like you said the drive to want to be you know considered the best. I mean, when you're when you're when you're and when it seems like you're content fighting once a year. You, you, the drive's probably not there. Yeah, it's just. It's not, as a writer slash fan of boxing, he consistently kind of underwhelms me with kind of his, uh, his love for the sport. Not to question it, but it's just like, he, he'll win and then he'll be like, oh, I'm going to like, He'll win a fight, and then he'll call out Lomachenko, and then he doesn't go to a fight. Like, he doesn't go to Lomachenko fights, but he calls out Lomachenko. Like, he does nothing to say relevant. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, that's that's definitely fair to say. It and then definitely he's, is. he's the type of guy that'll do that, and then he'll go, man, no one ever talks about me. Well, you don't really <laughs> fight that often, and you don't go to the fights. So that that's when people talk about you. You know, exactly. So. Yeah, he's not that type of guy. Who's, you'll see him at the, you know, whoever you know, big whatever big name fight is on. He's not the guy that you'll catch ringside. You know, with the cameras on him and stuff. So I mean, if you're if you're not gonna if you're only gonna fight once a year, you know, at least you know try to make yourself be seen. But even then, you know, he's kind of lurking in the shadows. But you know, yeah, it is it is what it is. So we got some fights this week, um, none of which are super big. Um, remember Taka Khan Kalari? I remember, uh, yeah, super high on him. Top rank was super high on him, and then he got knocked out. Yeah, we got knocked out an undercard, and it appears he got cut by top rank, and now he's fighting in Louisville, Kentucky on CBS Sportsnet. Um, oh, jeez. Well, yeah. at least it's on TV. <laughs> I mean, basically, to put it bluntly, it's looking like he's a high-end opponent now. So he's, like, trying to accumulate wins and 
maybe find himself in an Oscar Valdez fight down the road. Yeah. Like who's he, who, who, who's he fighting? Uh, a guy I've never heard of. Aurelio oh. Rodriguez. Hmm. The ever popular. Then we got uh, Cletus Selden, fresh off of his PED um, test. He failed a steroid test, and now he's fighting again. I guess he got his ear thing. He was in the WBC wellness program and popped. That's all I know about him, and that he fought on ESPN once. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I. I don't. I don't. Name sounds familiar, but I don't. I don't know if I've seen him fight. They call him the Hebrew Hammer. He fought on ESPN and told people go across the street to the bar and I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> like he literally, I just remember that about him. He pointed to the bar across the street and said, "I'm going to be there in 30 minutes after I get my medicals." And I was like, I don't think this guy's going to be a champion. Yeah. Because I can't really see, yeah. like, Andy or some of these more serious fighters being like, okay, guys, it was great to see you. I'm going to be at Papa John's, and now we're just come and see me. <laughs> yeah. That's a great uh, great way to show your dedication right there. Yeah, it, just, it doesn't strike me as, like, I don't see, like, a Floyd Mayweather or a Manny Pacquiao or any of these guys just, like, uh, telling the general public, hey, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be consuming stuff I shouldn't consume. Come see me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no, definitely not. He, safe to say he's uh, not on the level of those you just mentioned. Did you hear about Floyd um, to get an interview with him fight week in uh, Las Vegas for the McGregor fight? You had to go at like four in the morning to his strip club? <laughs> no, I'm I, serious. You know yeah, no, I, I saw, I saw, um, who was it? Uh, there was, there was a lot, there was, you know, a bunch of MMA outlets and, and just random, uh, I guess, you know, news outlets that did interviews with them and they were all at the strip club. I got right outside the strip club. Well, yeah, but I, I, I didn't know that that was like, you know, the, uh, the thing you had to, uh, do in order to set up an interview. Yeah, um, no, apparently he wouldn't do any interviews. This is a rumor I heard, unless you came to his club and paid to get in. Oh, wow. So, well, yeah. That's, I mean, uh, I, not, probably not something I would do, but, you know, a lot of other people would. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, Just also, pay to hear Floyd Mayweather say the same. Same thing he says in every interview. Also, shout out to um, the owner of the Atlanta Falcons. Most reasonably priced football stadium for everything. Oh, yeah. I mean, those. I, I did a double take when I saw those prices. I was like, what is this? Are, are we in uh, 2017 still? Is, is this a recent sign? I mean, cheap beer, cheap water, cheap everything. Bro, this is so stupid. ESPN is showing footage of people kneeling and in unison rather than the NFL blitz. Jeez. Like, I just want to see Allen Robinson or a receiver catch a football. Yeah, man, that's, that's, that's all anybody, you know any news outlet is talking about man it's it's something that i mean i've over the last two days i'm kind of burnt out on that stuff you know i get home that's probably why i don't even i I mean i rarely even watch espn anymore if we're being honest i got some i got some i know people that that work work there and then i'll read their stuff you know but i mean that's kind of what espn has turned into okay well we got to cut this podcast short because i got to do something well, Martin, I appreciate you coming on. Um, let people know where they can follow you. All right, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, the best platform that, you know, you can really support me by following me on is on Twitter. Uh, it's at Martin J. Gallegos. Uh, you know, if you are anything into uh, any type of Bay Area sport from boxing to baseball or anything. You can follow me there. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, man, if, if, if you all could just 
read my stuff. That'd be awesome. So retweet his stuff. And Martina, I appreciate you. And I'm going to try to get you on more um, regularly. Probably next week I'm probably going to hit you up because we've got to do hot putting. Maybe we'll make a pound for pound list or something. But we got to do something. Um, yeah. So, okay. Hey, hey, Luke, before you, before uh, we end this thing, though, I got we didn't we didn't even get into uh, I don't know if you did a podcast yet on this though, but Andre Ward retiring. What do you think? I you know um, didn't maybe really that's a podcast me. for for another time. Maybe maybe we'll I'll just give a brief thought. Maybe we'll do an episode next week on that because literally there's no fights uh, yeah. coming up that following week. So we're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to come up with like theme shows. But, yeah, I know. I just seen I just seen people talking about. I mean, you know, Andre Ward obviously isn't you know outside of the Bay Area the most popular guy, but I mean, I see people actually questioning whether or not he was a great fighter. I mean, that's insane to me. Yeah, I mean, um, what's it called? To me, if you're that dumb and you question if he's a good fighter. I mean, that's like saying, is Tim Duncan good at basketball? Yeah. Like, I mean, you can not like how Tim Duncan played basketball, but if you say, is he good at it, I have to look at you and think, are you a silly person? You know, because the it, it's not debatable if he's good or not. Yeah, it just, that, it baffles me, man. I, I, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, as, as time goes on, it, it, people kind of, you know, gain a little more respect for him, man. But it, it's it's crazy that he's not uh, talked about like the like the legend that he should be. In my I opinion, think Ward retired because he realized he, he could do whatever he wanted, and he'd never get the credit he deserved. And he realized how underappreciated boxing is, how kind of awful the sport is, how it uses and abuses fighters. And throws them away like they're nothing. And he made a lot of money. And he just realized, why do I have to stay in this? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I don't... Yeah. I. One, the, the one thing that would have been, I mean, I guess cool for, for, you know, people around here is to see him fight one more time in Oakland. But, I mean, he really... I mean, you look at it, I had nothing else to prove. So, I mean, I don't fault him for retiring. I congratulate him. I feel like there might be one last Oakland show. Like, he might give the people of Oakland one go home. Like, I think if he did come back, it would be for an Oakland fight, and it would be at, like, a heavyweight little fun bout for him because he's always said he wanted a heavyweight fight, and he probably would want... So I feel like he might come back, like, if there's, like, a Bellu or a Chris Ariola or some... You know what I mean? Like, a little fight for him, but I feel like to, like... He basically was ready to retire, right, against the after the first Kovalev win. He basically comes yeah. out of retirement, stops him, and then all people can say is he's a dirty fighter, he hit Kovalev low. No one talks about the left hook that rocked Kovalev 15 seconds before he gets stopped. To the head. Exactly. Exactly. And we both interviewed Ward... He's a very smart guy, and I think he realized people aren't going to ever give me credit. Yeah. So it's like, it's good. Yeah. It's good to see him. Uh, it, I mean, I think now that he's retired, you'll see him. You know, he's not, he's in, he's a smart. Like you said he's a smart guy. So I mean, we'll see him. You know, doing those broadcasts on ESPN. Maybe people then will kind of start to warm up to him as he as he goes on. Hopefully. I think his competitive edge. And his chip on the shoulder, which made him kind of a tough interview at times because he was like, he, he to me fueled off of negativity. He wanted you to doubt him so bad that he'd train hard. So when you asked him questions, I always felt at times, and I'm not saying you, but I'm saying me, and maybe I'm misinterpreting this. He always wanted it to be kind of in a negative slightly so he could go back and train. Like, I'm doubting him, you know? And I'm wondering if he's not going to be that way as much going forward now that he's away from the sport. Yeah, no, I definitely, I mean, every every time, you know, yeah, it seems like every time I would, 
I mean, me and you would go talk to him like in a group setting. Yeah, it does seem like like he he kind of you know was that way. You know, he he took he wanted to you know find a way to to take everything as a as a slight, and you know, not 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 because he doesn't like the person. He just you know it, it, that fueled him to be great. So, yeah, yeah, and it, remember that media day for Kovalev where he worked out for like four and a half hours. I I left in the middle of it. Like it literally started at eleven, and I remember I left at two thirty to beat traffic. He did a like a thirty minute meet. You, were you there for that? Yeah, yeah. And then he did a thirty minute media scrum, and then he starts hitting the bag, and I go, "Oh, this is gonna be over quick." He changed like three shirts. Like he yeah. kept changing his shirts. He had people mopping the floors. He went from uh, wor- warming up to heavy bag to, um, oh God, it, I mean, and to me, that's when I'm like, this guy is fueling off of everyone doubting him because it was like, basically I felt like that workout was, I'm going to work out so long. You guys are going to leave. Like I'm going to work out so long. You guys who don't work out are going to get tired of seeing me work out. I almost felt like that was like an intentional ploy and it might not have been, but that's how I poetically read that because he literally worked out to the point where I could no longer watch him. Yeah, man, that was that was pretty. I I don't, I've never seen a media day like that. I don't think I have. Like, how am I exaggerating? Like, were you there for the whole time? And how long do you think the workout was? It it was yeah it was it was definitely a few hours. It was yeah I forgot I forgot about that. It was like I want to say it was literally like a two and a half hour workout probably. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't your uh, typical uh, show up, you know, hit the bag, do a do a little flashy uh, you know workouts and, and head out. This dude really he did put in work that day, man. And I remember he had that song playing that he fought to like the the king song what's a king and he kept mm-hmm. it was on loop so it was like one song kept playing and it was the song he was fighting to and it was like on loop so every three minutes the same song starts over again and yeah. he, he kept singing the song like so there's a part in the song where he'd like kind of rap along with it and i remember for his second media day when he kind of was dancing in the ring i don't know if i told you or, or i told Celso this but I kind of felt like I could sense the end of Andre Ward's career was kind of close because um, I could tell he was having fun. And at a lot of Andre Ward media days, I didn't see the word fun with it. Like I, It felt like he was proving people wrong, that it was intense. And at that last media day against Kovalev, he was dancing and he was smiling a little bit. And I'm like, ooh, this is it's a little different. Yeah, no, I was gonna, I was, I was just gonna say that. Yeah, it was, it was a completely different uh, vibe. You know, he was, uh, he was real nice with, uh, with uh, everybody who showed up in the in the group group sessions and all that. I mean, he was answering everybody's question. He was giving real, you know, thoughtful answers to pretty much every question. So it was kind of a an Andre Ward that, uh, I guess, looking back at it, yeah, I mean, it was kind of a signal that you know. Maybe he he realizes this is the last last go, and he wanted to go out. Uh, first of all, I think I think he he knew he was going to win that fight, so I think that's why he was in a little better mood. But um, yeah, I mean it was it was uh, something that you know wasn't common with him, you know, when he was you know dealing with media. Yeah, I, to me, looking back, it's like he knew that was his last fight. If we all, if we kind of look at everything, it, it was almost like he's like, this is the last time I'm doing it. I'm going to appreciate this moment, you know? And I know there were rumors, people were saying he was going to go to top rank. And it seems like it was well substantiated. And I think that he just thought about it. And I don't want to speak for him, but it's like, you look at his peer group, Tim Bradley just retired. Tim Bradley one of the best of his – like, Tim Bradley, Andre Ward, first ballot Hall of Famers. No if yeah, answer. no question. Yep. If you don't agree with that, you're you're not – I don't know what to say. And I think that he looks at the guys he was amateurs with, and would you say Berto's basically retired after the Porter fight? Yeah, I mean – I think yeah. I don't think he's coming back. I have a feeling that that might have been the last one. 
And it's like you look at these guys he grew up with and they're retiring. And I think that that's another thing too. Like, do you really want to start to be the guy that's the older guy in the gym? That you won't. And there's young guys that you didn't grow up and you didn't see. And I know that fuels some people, but if everyone you grew up with, they're starting to go on to a new cha- a new phase in life and you're still the guy in the gym, at what point does that catch up to you, you know? Yeah, man, I, I always, I, I'm of the belief that it's always better to get out maybe a little too early than, than too late, man. I don't, I don't want to see a, a guy who, who I consider a legend, you know, look just you know bad get old one day so it's better i think it's better you know if he does have a little bit left in the tank just better to just ride off into the sunset man yeah i don't i don't really know um i don't know all the intricate details about everything in life but i know that uh andre ward is gonna be go down as a legend i think that andre ward is gonna be someone that when we when we look back on his career, people are going to go, oh, he was pretty good. Like, I think he's going to get more respect in hindsight than he would, um, than he got during his career. Like, I feel like historians are going to nerd out about him, how they did Ray Leonard or Ray Robinson. Like, I feel like he's going to be one of these guys where at the time he didn't get his respect, but maybe 30 years from now, people will ask us, hey, what was that like? What was that like being at an Andre Ward fight, you know? And what's crazy for us is we take for granted this, but we literally saw the majority of his career. Like, we saw the majority of the big fights. I know the first fight I covered was Chad Dawson. So I basically yeah. covered, outside of the Super 6, I covered all the big Ward fights, minus the Vegas ones. And... It's kind of crazy to think in 20 years there's going to be historians that might hit up both of us to say, yo, what were some of these interactions like? Yeah, no, definitely, man. We, I mean, I, I remember him before I was when I was a kid. I, I would, I went and watched him fight at the uh, San Jose Arena a couple times. I was early on in his career. So, yeah. I mean. I remember I mean, just being a young guy, and I'm a little older than you, but I don't want to say how much because I don't have gray in my hair yet. <laughs> but, um. I remember watching him on TV and um, thinking it was cool. A guy that lived about 20 miles from my house won a gold medal because I didn't think that was possible. I didn't think people that lived near me could win gold medals. Like, I know that sounds silly, but I just didn't think people in my, like, people that I could drive to their house, show up, and say hello to won gold medals. I thought people that won gold medals were hidden away in factories or went to Colorado Springs, and they didn't interact with people. And the fact that he won a gold medal kind of blew my mind. Yeah, man, he just, I mean, the guy did everything the right way. You know, he didn't try to be something that he was not just to get more more uh, publicity. You know, I mean, he, he, I, 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 don't, I don't see how, how you can hate the guy, but, uh, you know, some people out there do, but like you said, I think over time, you know, he will get that respect. At least I hope. But, yeah, that's about it on that. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. It's just, it's a it's a tough business. It's, um, it's just, I don't know. It's just hard because it's like most of the people don't like him. Jason based off of the fact that they're not, his style didn't appease them. So they're like, eh, we don't like his style, so we're going to write him off. And because of that, well, that's just the way it is. Yeah. Hey, how you doing in uh, fantasy football? Killing it. You winning this week? I'm winning 3-0 in both of my leagues. Nice. How are you doing? You were real cocky, and then you found out that, um, like, actually getting good players sometimes doesn't work. Yeah, man, I should, I should, I should have known better than to, uh, to say anything week one. But uh, 
you know, had the back. team. You had the team that I had last year, where I'm like, I overthought it, and I was like, "Ooh, I'm gonna be good." Joe Williams is gonna come <laughs> in. Carlos Hyde always gets hurt, and now you're just you're not quite having the season from hell, but you're close. Yeah, I mean, I want. I'm doing good. I, I'm about to win this week, so I'll, I'll be two and one. You know, I I lost week one, but I'm bouncing back. You know, I've been making. I've been um, on top of my. Uh, you're on the waiver, waiver, wire. waiver wire moves, making those sneaky picks. So I'm still confident, man. I'm still confident in my well, team. Well, I got JJ Nelson, and I don't know how I got him because I'm two and zero, oh, and everyone let him slip, and that's that's gonna hurt some people's feelings. Like, and Joe Mixon just started being good. So if Joe Mixon starts being good, um, I don't know. And Kirk Cousins put up a thirty burger today. I didn't watch the Raiders game, but, um, yeah, those 30 burgers hurt in fantasy football. Yeah, I did not, not, oh, well, I mean, can't say I didn't, I didn't see the Raiders playing so bad coming, but I mean, Kirk Cousins lighting them up didn't surprise me too much, I guess. I feel like the Raiders are going to have some really tough, um, I, I, I just never have seen signing a quarterback for big money work before they win the Super Bowl or, like, really do something. And I just felt like, oh, that's probably going to be not a good one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, I mean, they've got a good team, but I... I, I, like, I, I don't see... They're not, they're not... I don't see them winning the Super Bowl this year. I mean... They're they're one of those teams that are like going to be really fun to watch every year, but then I think they get to the to the playoffs and they maybe make it to the second round and then lose consistently. Yeah, I just I don't really like their ceiling right now. Like I I get that people really want them to be a Super Bowl contender, but it's just I don't see it. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. I, I wouldn't. They're not. Not my pick to go to Super Bowl this year. I don't think out of the AFC. I. I, I mean, I, as much as I don't want to see it, it's probably going to be the Patriots again, as far as AFC. Well, I thought it was going to be Patriots Giants. I blew it with the Giants, you know. So I don't know who's coming out. Um, I think K- Kansas City might actually be the team that goes to the Super Bowl. I've always felt Andy Reid's going to have one um, Super Bowl win. So this might be his year. Yeah, maybe. I mean, that'd be nice. I, I've always, uh, I've always uh, had a respect for Alex Smith after that crap he went through in uh, San Francisco. But uh, well, I mean, he went know. through a bunch of like the JTO Sullivans to really throw it back, and then, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it just felt like. I, I tried to explain it to people. It's like we couldn't keep Alex Smith over Kaepernick just because he had been shelved so many times in his career. It's like he didn't even feel like a first round pick anymore. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I think he. I mean, with guys like that, they even you know with him, it looked like he was turning things around. I mean, I think the fresh start was just something that. It was just necessary. It just was. And I wish it happened earlier in his career, to be honest. You know, it's just I wish they had have let him um, do that. Speaking of sports franchise pipelines, Giants, Pittsburgh Pirates, Niners, Kansas City. Any any deeper than that? Uh... Mm, nah. Okay, man. Well, I'm gonna let you go now because I gotta. I really gotta go. But um, yeah, I'm gonna get with you soon. So I'll talk to you soon. All right, man. I'll talk to you later.